What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can tell, the quality of the video is so much better now. I just got a new Canon camera, so that's what I'm recording on right now. No more iPhone. Previously, I was recording on my iPhone X, but now we added up the quality. So I got a new camera. So I kind of started this tutorial a little bit late. Um, pretty much what I did here was I took that one and a half guard on the wall system and went all the way up to the ridge of his head. Not too high, but just enough up where I had enough room where I could do clip over cone. Go ahead and we're doing a high taper. So as you can tell, I'm taking off his C cup and then we're gonna be balding him out. All right, so that's the first step right there, getting it nice and bold. And we're going up and flicking out towards that line. Now I'm creating too harsh of a line, so that's easier to fade. We're gonna go ahead and take our clippers. This is my Gamma Ergo clippers. These are the best clippers in the market right now. Um, blade completely open, and we're gonna slowly take out that line. So we started completely open, we turned the lever halfway, and now we're completely closed, and we're just attacking that line. With these clippers, what I like the most about them is they got the notches on the side, so you can just notch down each time. Also, a lot of power, and they fit great in your hand. So next, we're moving to the one guard. Uh, this is completely open, so previously, like I said, we took the one and a half guard and went all the way up to below his parietal ridge. So the next guard below that would be the one guard. So we're using our one guard completely open, and we're just going to slowly close it down until we have it completely closed. And this guard right here will not remove that line. All it is is lining up the line, so it's a lot lighter and easier to take out with the half guard, which will come after. Sorry about the whole auto-focusing. Was, this is my first time recording with it, so... It was kind of, I had to get used to it. I wasn't checking it as often. So now we're moving on to the half guard, the 1 16th guard, and starting with the lever completely open. And then we're gonna just work it away, hitting those dark spots. As you can see, more closer to his ear is a little bit darker, and more closer to his vertical bar is a little bit lighter. So we're gonna be focusing more on that area around his ear and just lining up that area. Okay, this will completely blend into the blade completely open that we had initially created. And if it doesn't completely take out that line, go ahead and take off the guard and just have the blade completely open and use your corners as well. This is one of the techniques that I've uh, used to fade. I do have multiple different techniques that I use, just depending on what clipper I'm using. But that is on the wall system. And now we're just edging up the corner real quick. And now we're gonna do clipper over comb. Uh, this, this angle isn't too best to see how the clipper over comb is. Later in the video, I have another angle of the doing the other side. And that side you can really see how I'm scooping in and pulling the comb out and getting that nice square shape and blending right into it. As you could tell, that clip over comb blended right into that one and a half guard. This is, I believe this is the Motive comb that I'm using. So I got off Motive's page. They sent me a care package, so that's the comb that I'm using if you guys are curious. I'll put the, link, I'll put the tag of it down below in the description. But now we're just edging him up, keeping it super natural, just giving him a nice sharp line but not pushing him back or anything like that. We're just edging up, going over multiple times, getting that line as crispy as possible, and then we'll follow it up later with a razor. Also, this haircut, we were doing a hard part, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the hard part. It's kind of hard to see, but I just flipped the uh, trimmer over, and I'm just dabbing in there, making it very thin. I'm not trying to make a thick line, because after this, like I said, you're gonna follow up with the razor, and the razor is where you could thicken it up in certain areas, depending on how the client walks likes it. So make sure to consult with your client, do you want the line a little bit thicker? Do you want it very thin so it looks like a natural part? You know, you discuss that with your client during the consultation. All right, now we're moving on to the back and this is gonna be the same step. We're balding them out in the back. As you can tell, this is kind of a high taper. The reason why I do a little bit more high taper on the back is because he has a calic on the bottom of his, uh, bottom of his neck. And the reason I go a little bit higher because I go right up past that, so it doesn't give me any troubles. So I'm not sitting there trying to fade it out, wasting more time. Um, I feel like it fits his head a lot better this way. When you see it from the side, it looks nice. It looks very sharp. It's kind of like a draw fade in a way, but it's, it's still a taper. So then we're going to go ahead and bald them out as well. Same steps. And then we're going to start with the blade completely open. That's also, that's also a little tip. If clients do have calyx on their tapers in the back, don't be afraid to go up a little bit higher or arch it, do a half moon or whatever you can to take out that part so it gives you less trouble. So you're not sitting there turning your clipper and hurting yourself trying to take out that uh, calyx area.
and here we have the blade completely open starting our first guideline going up about an inch you know this guideline is really crucial so you want to go up about a good inch so you have enough room to fade out and remove that bald guideline after that the other guards you could go a little bit smaller you don't have to go as big of a guideline so we're going to follow that all the way through so now that we have a full inch guideline how we're going to break that down is so you have one full inch guideline right that's the blade completely open after that you want to there's four different notches that you're going to hit you're going to hit completely open completely closed and then two notches in between those two so you got completely closed then you have a quarter of an inch open then you have a half an inch open and then you have completely open so you have four steps all right and you're going to break that down within that inch so you have a full inch guideline you're going to attack that very bottom line going up a quarter of an inch and then after that you're going to open up the blade a little bit more and you're going to go up another quarter of an inch so now you're halfway through and you're halfway open with your clipper after that, you're gonna open up a little bit more and you're gonna go three quarters of the way up. So pretty much hitting that top line. And then after that, you're gonna go completely open and pretty much go right over the guideline that you just created. And that's how you're gonna remove that ball guideline and how you're gonna get a nice clean transition in your fade. I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys can kind of follow along what I'm doing. But that's pretty much how I break that ball guideline. You really have to go up in your guidelines in order to get a nice transition fade. If you don't go up, then you're not gonna have a nice transition fade. And then like I said, the next step is the one guard completely open. And this is gonna fade right into that one and a half guard that we started our full base, base with. I hope that makes sense. Now moving on to the neckline, you want to keep this as natural as possible. You don't want to dig in there and get it too, you know, push back and have it grow backwards. So I'm keeping it nice and natural. I'm using my gamma hitters right here with a P3 blade on there, which is a modified blade. I'll have all the links for, I'll have all the links down below in the description if you want to purchase your own to check them out. But as you guys can tell, it's making that nice sharp line, keeping it nice and natural. And it's, as you guys can see, the taper is really popping. And it suits his head shape a lot better. He has kind of a longer neck, so I was able to go a little bit higher with the taper fade. So how I work is I usually do one side at a time, or sometimes I'll go all the way around. It just really depends on the client. I change it up. I don't try not doing the exact same thing every time. It just keeps it more interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock down his mustache and do this side of his beard. Just so that's this side's all done. All I have to do next is just work on the next taper on the other side. So the beard we did the same with that we did the base on the haircut which was the one and a half guard and then this is just a little technique to speed up time if you flip your clipper over and kind of flip out like that or scoop out like that it kind of fades right into the beard it's a little technique that i learned it's a little bit more advanced so don't try it unless you're confident in it and then we're going to go ahead and line up the mustache area keep it nice and natural right above the mustache right above the lip my bad <laughs> and then we're just edging up his goatee keeping it nice and clean don't worry later on throughout the videos i get better at my angles and making sure you guys can see everything but this was my first video like i said so bear with me now for the neckline of his beard since it's a little bit weaker on the bottom i'm keeping it right below his jawline so it'll make the beard look a lot more fuller and it won't you'll kind of hide the patchy areas that he has and i'm just going to remove all that bulk and then follow up with a shaver keeping the beard looking as full and natural for his beard because everyone has different beards so you want to make the best beard for what the person has all right next step is we're going to follow up with a razor go ahead and just edge up everything that we lined up get it nice and crispy and if you guys can leave a like or a, a sub down below for the angles that i begin for you guys look at this I'm squatting right here. My quads are on fire, but hey, I gotta get those angles for you guys, right? But just stretch the skin, lead with the front point of the razor, and go to the most fullest area. And if you can't get a sharp line, make sure to have them blow a bubble in their cheek so that you could get a more straight and sharp line. 
usually on the left side of their i'm a righty so on the left side i don't really need them to blow a bubble but when it comes to the other side it kind of helps just because of the you know being a righty but that was the first pass came out kind of sharp but go ahead and remove everything comb it through and make another line getting as sharp as possible okay you want to go over it about two to three times to get that nice sharp crispy line you want to keep it as full as possible not pushing it down but you have to go down enough to where you get to the fullest area all right right here you're going to see a better angle of how i'm using my clipper over comb but you can see it's slightly angled and i'm scooping in and then i pull out and i'm connecting with a one and a half guard and then the long hair so on the very bottom of the comb you can see that it's barely hair from the one and a half guard and as i scoop out i remove all that excess there which gives a nice transition from long to short hair and keeping the hair uh the head shape squared so it doesn't look round and it suits the client the best that it can Now we're moving on to the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and just be quiet and let you guys listen to the dope music in the background and follow along for yourselves, all right? I also apologize right here, the camera cut out. I didn't know, so you guys didn't see the bottom neckline and also lining up the side of the beard. But I apologize for that. But as you guys can tell, both sides are looking super crispy. My boy's coming back to life. You can see the symmetry on both sides, both of them being as symmetrical as possible. So always step back, look at your client, see where the curve is coming. Is it coming you know, below his lip? Is it above his lip? Is it right at his lip, crease? All that, just to get, you know, a good reference point of where you need to put the line at. This is a tip, always comb the hair to the direction of the lines that you've created. So as I've made those vertical bars, I'm combing the hair to that area and then I'm using my scissors to cut the excess off. So no matter where his hair moves, it will not go past that line and there won't be any overhang. Same thing with the hard part. You can do the same thing with beards, um, lineups, eyebrows. It's a good tip to do so the hair doesn't move outside of the lines that you established. Also, after I finish the guides, after I finish clipper over comb, I always follow it up with scissor over comb because this gives the, the nice polished, flawless look. It have, helps with the transition going from light to dark and it's the best way to finish that haircut. Clients do actually appreciate it when you do use scissors on the hair. All right, now we're moving on to the top. Go ahead and get your spray bottle, sit, sit, saturate the hair. <laughs> so, so, saturate the hair as uh, good as possible. You want the hair to be nice and wet. Move everything to the direction where the calic is moving, where the hair style is going to be. I like to get the hair wet and push it to the direction that I'm gonna be styling the hair. So he's getting a comb over, so I'm combing it all over to one side. If he was doing a slick back, I would slick it completely back. So once you get the hair all nice and saturated, we're gonna go ahead and start trimming the hair. So since he's coming up and just getting a cleanup, um, his hairstyle's pretty much been the same. It's not like he came in with a lot of hair. This is how I do the trimming. So start with the front, pull it nice and up, nice good tension, and then he wanted about an inch off, so I cut an inch off, and then just follow that same direct guideline all the way back. So this is the traveling guideline. So as you pull up, I can see those short hairs, cut all that off. And 
This sometimes people do wrong because they'll go too short in the front and then the back will be longer. So make sure in the front you pull up a little bit higher because the front of the head is a lot shorter than the top of the head. So the top of the head is the apex area and that's the highest point of the head. So when you're in doing the front guideline, you wanna make sure you're pulling up a lot higher so that the front is longer and it goes shorter on the way back. And then you're just gonna to move to the right side of his head and then you can see obviously the guideline and you're just gonna connect the two. And you just follow that all the way back, keeping it consistent. Now we're going to be moving on to the side. And we're coming doing this side. You're, we're connecting the long hairs between the clip over comb and from the top that we just cut. So as you can see, there's a little bit of excess there. You just cut that. So you get a nice transition from the side to the top. So everything's just connecting the dot. You want to connect what you did with the clipper of a comb, the one and a half guard, to the long hair. And as you, long as you break everything down, you can connect the dots and get it nice and perfect. So now we're just double checking, we're cross checking. So we did horizontal sections at first. So now we're doing vertical sections. And as you can see, you can see what hairs are long, what hairs are short, what's uneven. And this is how you, sh how you get, make sure to get the most perfect haircut. Make sure everything's nice and even so that when they go home and wash out their hair, they don't got long hairs on one side, shorter hairs over there. So make sure to always cross check. If you first start your guideline with a horizontal uh, section, cross check with vertical. If you start with a vertical section, cross check with uh, horizontals. Right here, I'm putting some oil serum in the hair. And what this does is prevent the hair from heat damage because I'm about to blow dry his hair. So I always like to put an oil serum in his hair so it protects his hair. Also, it does give it a nice polished look to the end results after you blow dry it. And it, you know, it just protects his hair, smells good, and it just makes the hair uh, flow a lot better. So now we're gonna go ahead and just blow dry his hair nice and dry, make sure it's fully dried. And we're gonna be pushing it back to the side a little bit. Also, whenever you're working, whether it's blow drying or razor work or fading, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you're standing in a position where you feel comfortable, the clipper feels good in your hand or the blow dryer feels good in your hand. Make sure you're in a comfortable position. If you need to move your client's head, if you need to turn him or have him look a certain way, don't be afraid to tell your client that because you're the one cutting five, 10, 12 clients, 15 clients a day. So you need to make sure that your body isn't in weird positions and you're hurting your back or your legs or anything like that. So make sure that you move your client away because you're the one cutting hair all day. And right here is pretty much what I was saying, like kind of combing the hair and cutting it towards the line. So since you have the hard part, I kind of combed this hair just straight, like as if it would be styled forward. And I cut whatever excess was over on that hard part so that when he styles it, it's very easy for him to distinguish where the hard part is and there's no excess hairs going over to the hard line. All right, to finish off the cut, we're gonna go ahead and throw some product in there. This one had like a low shine, not too, nothing too crazy of a shine, good hold. I feel like it suited the haircut nicely. This is all completely natural, no uh, enhancements, nothing. This is a complete natural look. He doesn't like any of the enhancements. So this is how you get a nice natural look. You can still get a sharp line, crispy fade without any enhancements, but the enhancement would definitely take this cut to the next level. This is my favorite styling comb right here. It's the fishtail comb. Um, I like it a lot. I got this from Barber Nova. I'll have the links down below, but we're gonna go ahead and throw some aftershave. Always like to throw aftershave to finish off the cut, clean up everything, you know, make sure his skin's feeling nice and fresh. After I do the aftershave, I always follow it up with a blow dryer. It just feels good, feels nice and cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's the tutorial. 
make sure to like comment subscribe i got a lot more new tutorials and videos coming soon on this <laughs> crazy quality the canon's dope i truly you know you always gotta invest in yourself get new things so this is the aftercut i didn't get it before so i'm sorry but other videos i do make sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one right i'm out